Hi YouTube friends and family, Michaela here. So it's been a long time since we've done a video and I apologize for that. There are no real excuses. Um, I do have reasons, but no excuses. You've probably already read the title, um, Trying to Conceive Success Story Part 1. So you probably already understand that we are a success story. For those of you that have followed us um, and family members, you already know that after my youngest son, who is now 12 years old, um, I had my tubes tied. That was a choice I made. I was really young. I regret that choice. I don't recommend that choice to anybody. Everything happens for a reason. I'm just going to get right into it and start with um, the part one of the trying to conceive. Um, I, like I said, had gotten my tubes tied after my last son, who is now 12 years old. Um, I believe I was 21-ish. It's been a long time. And when I had gotten my tubes tied, I had the process um, of cut, cauterize, and tie. Basically, it was like the top-notch, you will never get pregnant again type of birth control that I chose. I swore up and down I was never going to have any more kids. Wow, has time changed my mind, and wow, has God worked on my heart. Back in 2016, I want to say it was, I'll just say January 2016, my husband um, was working at a really good job. And we had been researching for years on the tubal reversal process. And a couple of doctors that came into focus or that were our primary choices were Babies by Levine and then Dr. Moore, who is based out of California. Now, Babies by Levine is um, based out of Kentucky, and he was our first choice. Babies by Levine is what it is. If you Google it, you can see his websites and he does a really good job of explaining the process and how he works. Our second choice was Dr. Moore, and he was based out of California. Better logistically, but again, it wasn't our first choice, and we were kind of nervous um, because, you know, once you find that one doctor that you really like, you're kind of hell-bent on going with that one doctor. We decided to go with Dr. Moore in California. I think it was March 15th or 25th, somewhere in between there. Um, we had scheduled for our tubal reversal with Dr. Moore. Now, going back, my husband at this point had a really good job. The company offered what was called an FSA, or it's an account that the company advances you. Um, I think it was like $2,400 on a medical credit card. And out of each one of your paychecks, you would give a certain amount towards you know, whatever you used or you would, they would take out a certain amount from each paycheck. So it wasn't like ripping off a band aid and you having to come up with, you know, $3,000 for any medical procedure. Um, you had this medical credit card. We ended up using my husband's FSA account for the procedure. And, um, I think out of pocket, we ended up paying close to $1,200. Um, I want to say, give or take. Now, what's really cool, most of these tubal reversal doctors have like payment plans. So if you put a chunk of money down, like we used his FSA, so let's say that covered like $3,000, and you had, you know, $1,500 or $2,000 that you had to pay or $2,200 or whatever it is, um, they would set up a payment arrangement for that $2,200. And they would schedule your surgery date for whenever those payments would end. That's what we chose to do. So thankfully with um, my husband's job, um, God has blessed us in that aspect that we didn't have to fork out $5,000 right out of pocket. Granted, it was still coming out of his paychecks, but it's not nearly as painful as having to pay, you know, 5000 cash. Um, it hurts more when it's coming out of your hand cash than it does when it's coming out of a prepaid account. Um, so to speak. The day of the procedure, what happened was um, Daniel and I decided to drive out to California. Um, we got there, we left really early in the morning and we ended up getting there probably mid-afternoon and we had a appointment, this was the day prior to the surgery, we had an appointment with Dr. Moore to go over my blood work, make sure that I was able to get the surgery. So we go in and we have the appointment with Dr. Moore and he explains to us the procedure that we're gonna um, go to his surgical office and um, 
Daniel would be able to be there and that he would keep Daniel updated. The entire time I was under anesthesia, um, he would not be able to be in this, in the operating room. However, um, he would be able to be in the waiting room and that they would send a nurse out to update him constantly throughout the surgery. I think it was like a two and a half, three hour procedure. So we went to the appointment. We ended up booking a hotel. We stayed in a hotel room that night. So the next morning I was scheduled to be the very first, um, surgery for Dr. Moore. And I believe, I want to say it was at like seven in the morning. So we went to the operating building. He's got two separate buildings. He's got his office and then he's got his surgical building. So we went to the surgical building. Um, and this is where it gets a little bit foggy because I was so nervous. Um, Anytime you go under surgery, you are incredibly nervous and, you know, you just, there can be complications from just anesthesia. So I was freaking out because I'm, you know, I freak out anyways because of anesthesia. So anytime I've been put under, when I come out, I'm like bawling and freaking out because I am not aware of my surroundings. So <laughs> we um, went to the surgical building and decided um, at that point that this is happening. You know, and I I don't want to give statistics for um, the tubal reversal success rates. Um, he did give me my personalized um, statistics, but they they're different for each person, and depending on what process you had originally when you had your tubes tied, um, I had the gung ho holy grail of tubal ligations and that was the cut cauterize and tie um, so I knew going into it it was a very low percentage that it would be successful enough for us to get pregnant right away I knew that there was a chance of ectopic pregnancies and yada 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 so I'll go on to that in, in another video because this video is going to run super long and I'm gonna have to break it up into um, parts so anyways, we get in there and um, I had to sign a bunch of paperwork. I had to sign my life away, so to speak. Um, I think we waited probably 15 minutes and we ended up, um, Daniel couldn't walk me back to the operating room, so I, I left him in the waiting room. I walked back with the doctor's nurse and she gave me the hospital socks and a gown and I had to wear a hat and booties basically anything that you would wear if you were going into surgery I suppose I I don't know it was a very clean environment it was um, actually kind of relaxing the lights were dimmed quite a bit um, and then the anesthesiologist I remember after I had gotten changed I had laid down on the the table that is supposed to be a bed but it's so uncomfortable it's just like a freaking table so I laid down on the table, the anesthesiologist come in and um, asked me a bunch of questions. My height, my weight, they wanted to verify everything on the paperwork was accurate. Any um, medical history that I had, any medications I was taking. He even asked me how I deal with being put under, if I've ever had it done before. And that's when I got to explain to him that I freak out a lot. Basically, after the anesthesiologist met with me, the nurse came in and prepped my IV. Um, they wheeled me back into the operating room and I remember thinking to myself I felt like I was in a butcher shop because everything was like stainless steel. I remember the anesthesiologist having me count backwards from 10. I don't think I got to 8 before, at least I don't remember getting past 8 before I absolutely was just out. I remember the nurse coming over to check on me and she was upping my pain. Um, I still had the IV in and she was giving me more pain medicine because as I would go in and out of, you know, in the process of waking up, she said that I was like crying hysterically saying it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. So she um, upped my pain meds and I, at this point, I know that anesthesia had wore off but I had so much pain meds in me, I was just loopy. I, I, I was still crying. That's what I do. I cry for hours after anesthesia. So it wasn't because it was painful. It was because I'm a wuss and I cry after anesthesia. 
I do remember them wheeling me out of the room and down this long hallway. And at the end of the hallway, I see Daniel. And when the moment I saw Daniel, I just started sobbing, 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 crying. And Daniel's looking at me and I could tell he was freaking out because he doesn't know what to do. He's like, here's my wife, whom I love very much. And she's freaking out and I can't help her. So immediately they wheel me down um, into the parking garage and they help Daniel get me into the car. And at this point, I'm still sobbing, but this time it's because it's painful. Um, the getting up and getting into the vehicle was really hard to do. We had, I think it was like an 8 to 10 hour ride home. And the doctor had briefed Daniel on what to look out for um, the, on the way home, you know, bleeding and um, all the, the things to look for um, if something goes wrong. So we're in the car and all I remember for that entire like eight hours is I'd be passed out sleeping and I was hugging, I had my seatbelt on and I was hugging my pillow like this and my, my um, car seat was reclined and I had my head up against the seatbelt like this and I'm just like, I would fall asleep and then I remember I would wake up and I would look at Daniel and I would fall asleep again. I am actually personally glad that we decided to drive home right after the surgery and that is because I could not imagine taking that car ride without all those pain meds still in my system because that's a long time to be in a car after a surgery. So that was the day of the procedure and the day after. I, the, um, we only were in California for two days. So we got home and that's where the fun began the recovery process. It was painful. I couldn't cough and I could kill Daniel for making me laugh. They had given me a prescription for, I think it was Percocet, I want to say. Um, and I did take that the first week. I could not sleep in my bed. I had to sleep. Um, you know, like those pillows that have the arms that come out like this and then, then like the back that props you up when you sleep. I slept with one of those on the couch. Um, being elevated or being like having your body reclined is the best and most comfortable thing you can do. I have to apologize because I, I am getting over a cold and I still have a bad cough and all that stuff. So, um, anyway, back to the story. Um, I couldn't sleep in bed. I had to sleep on the couch and that was for about the first week. And it was, I could get up and move around, um, it was actually less painful to be up and walking than it was to be just laying there. Um, we didn't have stairs in my house, so I couldn't tell you how that went. Um, but I can tell you, if you've got a husband who likes to joke around a lot and try and make you laugh when you're in pain, keep him away from you because it hurts. I... I remember we were sitting out on the front porch and at this point I think it was a little past a week um, after the surgery and I'm sitting there and he said something and it made me laugh so hard and I couldn't laugh my normal laugh so it was more like a <laughs> because I couldn't you know you you don't want a belly laugh like it hurt I, I couldn't laugh well then me laughing like that made Daniel laugh harder which in turn made me laugh harder and what it felt like, I don't know if you've ever felt this before, it felt like my tube was like stretching every time I laughed and it would send this burning sensation throughout my entire stomach. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm laughing and then I'm bawling because I'm laughing so hard. So note to self, keep every funny person away from you when you have your surgery. I can't say full recovery, but recovered like enough to be able to do my normal daily routines was about two weeks. You can't lift anything like 15 pounds or more. That was the surgery process. Um, I will leave in the description box below Dr. Levine and Dr. Moore's information or website or something for you to be able to look it up. Um, even though I didn't go to Levine, he comes highly recommended, but I will tell you this much. Dr. Moore was absolutely amazing. I wouldn't have had it any other way. 
He really was in tune with how I felt and catered to my psychotic episode after coming out of anesthesia. So he's a very good doctor. So are his nurses. I would recommend him to anybody. So yeah, that is the tubal reversal success story part one. Um, if you have any questions that I did not answer, leave them in the comments below and I will try and do a Q&A video later on. Um, to go over some of those questions that I may not have answered. Like and share this video. We're kind of taking a detour from the homesteading and moving into something a little bit more personal, which is the trying to conceive.